going on, family? It's your boy, Big Big. Welcome back to MyBlackUniverse.com. So you know what it is. It is time for an interview. We've got a special guest. This sister decided to jump out there and do something different other than the beard butters and balms and everything, the lotions, the body washes. She said, let me go in a different lane, and I like that. So we have the founder and CEO of Hello Puppet, which is a black-owned diaper brand. Welcome, everybody. Karen Mitchell. How are you today? I am well, Vic. How are you? Doing right, doing right. Let me do something real quick. Hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh. Me... There we go. Oh, are you? There we go. <laughs> you know, we're going to make this technology yeah, work. We're going to make this technology work. That's Let's right. You uh, here in my black universe, um, over here, we just try to put black owned companies uh, on the pedestal, so to speak. But always, we try to put the, the, the best of the best on the pedestal. And, um, so our community can can know where to look and know where to go to and to see who's going to be authentic because we do have people that try to come in with a quick dollar exploit us that some that are not black owned i've exposed and uh just great to see that you were doing diapers and you're black owned i was like oh okay i gotta get this system on here and i'm glad you decided to do this interview so first let's find out who is Kara missioner Yes, sir. <laughs> well, first, let me say it is definitely an honor to be here. Um, I'm glad to be in this this number here. And um, um, I know that these platforms don't go, go unnoticed. So blessings to you and your platform. And I pray that it grows each and each and every time um, you interview one of us. One awesome. of the greats, I should say. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. No problem. Okay, but uh, Kyara, I am... Let's see, a mom to okay. a beautiful, bold five-year-old girl. Okay. I am PTA treasurer, SAC treasurer, uh, community activist, um, embodied in love, if you will, and okay. uh, now mommypreneur, entrepreneur. And um, the reason why I started Elo Puppet was to protect families. So not just in a sense, like a physical sense, right? But yeah. to um, always make sure that we're being represented as when I say we, um, black families are being represented in a positive way. Our fathers are being represented in the most honorable and respectable way, right? So um, with that, you know, I was like, I needed a product that would always be here, right? And so we'll always have that representation. And it just kind of boiled down to diapers. And that is how Elo Puppet essentially came about. Okay, okay. All right, all right. So next question. Why'd you start a business? Like, you know, I know the pandemic was happening and, you know, a couple years ago, this seemed like there was a time where a lot of people were starting businesses and decided to venture out about why did you do it? Was it the pandemic or was it something else? Was it a combination of things? I like to say it was a, a combination of things. You know, I saw my peers um, getting a piece of the pie, if you will. Um, you know, wh whatever they were selling, you know, they were bringing in extra income. So I was like, I do want to bring in extra income, but I just didn't want it to be another stream of income. Right. I really wanted it to replace uh, my income, right? My nine to five. And so what really pushed me to go there was after the unfortunate tragic um, event or the murder of George Floyd and um, the negative comments that they were saying about George and, uh, you know, the fact that they didn't shine a lot of light on his daughter. And this was, a um, you know, a young girl that would be going home without her father, without her biological father. And so, you know, it just made me reflect on me and, and my family and my situation. And I was like, you know what, Th this can't keep happening. You know, we that we need protection, right? We need to be brought together. And we know that, um, you know, outside of a funeral, what, what brings people together? The birth of children. So this is a fun question. How did you come up with the name for your company? <laughs> It's really funny how I did it. So, you know, that's like the hardest part of the business is coming up with a name sometimes, at least for me. 
And so, you know, I was I was in bed one day and I was just going through my mind. And so I was like, hmm, what's my favorite thing to do? And I was like, I love going to the movies. And so I was like, mm, Lion King. I was like, no, nothing really sentimental or catchy, in my opinion. And I didn't want Disney to come come sue me or anything. Right. <laughs> and then I was like, <laughs> then I was like, um, hmm, Whitney Houston. I love her. Preacher's wife can really pull nothing. And then I kind of circled back to Disney and I was like, that is my favorite movie, which is Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. And um, I guess one of the most famous lines in that movie is when uh, the pirates break into the governor's house. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor is hiding in the closet and then the pirate finds her and he looks between the, the, the crack of the closet and he's like, hello, puppet. And then... Hello, Poppy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, it, all it is is a, it's a greeting that they use over there in the UK. The English use it. Um, it's kind of used to greet uh, children, and so it's not gender specific. So I just put American twist right. on it, right, by changing Poppet to Puppet. Um, hopefully Disney doesn't come after me, but yeah, that's how I came up well, with I, the I name. Don't they, I don't think they will. But okay, so hello, Poppet <laughs> is is how it's, what is. You know, I'm American, so you know, we pronounced or spelled, yes, yeah, spelled. That's how I spell, but it's pronounced Ella Puppet. But okay, yeah. I thought it was the elephant, I thought so. That, so, the elephant came after the name, correct? Yep, all mm -hmm. right, gotcha. all right, all right, that's dope, that's dope. So, we we spoke, I briefly spoke on how you decided to do something different, uh, with diapers, but there's also apparel, you know, like Nubia. I got my Nubia Pearl right here, which I love there, that's nice. I love yeah. that. Um, I got on this shirt. You probably seen this, the maroon flag shirt. Uh huh. Um, it's reading the sheet. Um, a boy from New Orleans, Cuba Sart. Okay. Beads, and this is a uh, uh, our stairwear on the watch. And so, there's a market for that. Why not? Why not that? Um. Well, I would say this retail is pretty complex. And I was reading this article one day, and this was around the time like Warren Buffett had just sold millions of shares in retail stock. I think Walmart being one of them. And then he, because he was just saying that, you know, it was just uh, too fast paced for trends. And again, it's just a complex industry. So when we talk about uh, even clothing, right? Um, it just would have been too hard to to find a niche right in a in a saturated market right. and so but that doesn't discount the market that i chose to enter into because remember i'm going up against um brands that are older than me pampers and huggies so right. Right. um and you know i'm not afraid at all but um i do understand what i'm up against and it may not be as complex but um it is very competitive okay all right, all right. All right, so next question. And this is something harkening to a video I did. I did a video recently on uh, the shipping issues I'm seeing as a consumer of Black-owned products. Um, I still got a, a product that ain't even shipped yet. I ordered it on June 9th. We reached out to the company. They, they chopped it up with me, We, we you know, some back and forth. Yeah. Uh, and I was happy they chopped it up with me, but I, I was like, look, I can't wait. That's the part of the reason why I'm, I'm kind of naked face a little bit. I ordered another kit from a different black owned company. Okay. Uh, and that's going to get here. So it gave me a chance to use that kit and let it grow with my beard. Yes. Uh, so how has shipping affected daily operations? Um, okay. Daily operations. Yeah, the, the ship the cost of shipping has risen, right? And but also the the times, right? The time it takes to deliver your the product, um, depending on uh, which carrier you use, it could take longer for less, or it can be a shorter delivery time for more money, right? And a lot of times, um, well, not a lot, but with black owned businesses, I noticed that they like to. Um, make the customer pay for shipping which is understandable really it is um i know for my company um when you just buy one item depending on the price um you'll you'll pay an extra for shipping but 
above a certain amount, you will um, get free shipping. Right. And so, right. you know, we're talking about diapers and people are expected to have those maybe within two to three days. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So depending on how much, uh, how much they order, um, you know, it could, it could take a while or longer than expected, at least on the consumers. And, um, but we always encourage our customers and we update them on, on saying, Hey, these are standard shipping times, please, you know, make your purchase purchases accordingly. Right. Cause we, yeah. we don't want to, um, we still want to be profitable, right? It's not really yeah. about the bottom line, but we we definitely want to be. Yeah, you just um, want to be just doing just a bit. <laughs> just enough to keep going, you know, in your first couple years, you know. Right. Uh, but you know that's how it has affected um, Hello Puppet. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Shipping has been look. I get it. I think everyone's heard. Um, yes. Like FedEx, UPS, USPS, DHL, you. You name it, they all hurt for manpower, particularly. I, I will say this um, for business owners. Here's a tip for business owners that ship anything that's lightweight. So I'll just name things like if you're shipping body butter, if you're shipping wigs, if you're shipping something that could be put in a in a mailer and it's not super, super heavy. I, I want to say probably over 10 pounds. Um, there is a new company called Sindel, and it is like some of our rates are as under they're under ten dollars, right? Um, okay. and they're under seven dollars. So, uh, how do you spell it? S E N D L E Sindel, and they deliver normally um, within one to two uh, business days. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. so you just an app, or is it you can go on the website? Only? You go on the website. Yep, sindle.com. So sindle.com. Let me edit that real quick for the people. Sindle.com. Oh, like that. All right, sindle.com. All right, bet, bet, bet. <clears throat> and thank you for the tip. Honestly, thank you. I, I'm I, I'm gonna make sure I probably clip that out and make that a a a, a, a real. Or something like that, so people can see it. That's dope. Um, that's dope information. Hurdles of being a black business owner, particularly a black woman business owner in the diaper industry. What have you encountered? Or is there anything to encounter? Here is what I notice, or what I believe that I'm, I know I'm up against. Right the. The diaper industry, believe it or not, is male dominated, right? White male dominated um, from the raw materials up into the through the supply chain, right? Logistics all the way up into who sells um, the product or even who's um, the who are the CEOs and founders. Right. Just recently um, in 20 from 2012 to 2019, we had two celebrities, um, one who is a woman of color, Jessica Alba. And then Kristen, uh, Kristen and Dak Shepard um, with Hello Bello, um, and you know these are women, and um, they we're, we're we're happy that we have women rep representation, right? Because we are dealing with or market to mothers, right? Okay. But for there's no rep representation of people of color or excuse me black people excuse me black people and so for a woman a black woman to enter into the market um it says a lot like it's it's really a big deal right, right. um diapers are a billion dollar industry multi-billion dollar industry I can believe it. Um, it is and um for for me to enter in you know, and I kind of just paved the way for anyone else, right? There's a lot of things that you can get into when we talk about diapers. Um, there's adhesive, right? So biochemists um, that are up up and coming, right? If you're raising your children into STEM, um, if you have college graduates, you know, they could essentially get into this business and create an adhesive that is, you know, biodegradable, it's safe, it's more cleaner than what we have right um they're the raw materials so cotton or into the non-woven fabric so only manufacturers that turn um 
that turn um, materials into fabrics that we use for our uh, for our wipes, right? For our sanitary napkins, for our paper towels, right? Okay. And so, and even wood, like lumber, all of that's needed um, in order to go into making a diaper. So for me, just to, you know, not be the, I may not be the first, but I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure I might be the only in, on the market right now if I'm not, you know, welcome. But um it's a it's a pretty big deal and it's a door that needed to be open, especially when we talk about representation and what the packaging, right? Seeing more black faces, more black babies that look like us on packaging, that's right. huge, right? We didn't start to see that until 2019, 2020. Um, I think Huggies was the first to put a right. yeah. black father on the right on the on the box. And then um, you know, you saw pampers and, and everything. Now, granted, depending on where you go. You know there are still um majority white faces but um you know times are changing and they need to understand that we need our own space in this market to in order to represent correctly right and w we have the minds and the resources to also create innovative and safe products okay all right does your business give back to the community Yes, we do. Okay. You want me to elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, let me ask you a question. Is it a people of color community or is it a black community? Ooh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, say, um, say underserved. Because when you think about it, um, yeah, we all know poor don't have a color, but... Um, even in those predominantly black areas, we'll, we'll find some other demographics, right? Oh, yeah. I can say that um, we have been to events um, that host or um, they were for um, black culture, right? Or black people. And um, we represented in that way. And so, you know, we've given, we've given donated items to those underserved uh, families, um, but then we also sold to those families that are um, able to buy our products and, and those such things. Um, more recently, I got involved with the community here in um, Seminole County and one of the community activists. So we're actually going to get ready to uh, form a 501c4 for social uh, welfare. Right. And with that nonprofit, we'll be able to educate and advocate for the black um, community that we are serving. And we actually want to make it county wide, but, um, and, and, and really grow it into something uh, big. And, and, and um, you know, it's just, it's bigger than what we are, bigger than the location where we we're serving right now. Okay. So I'm pretty excited about that and learning about different issues that we can solve and we can immediately help with, but then also creating our own um, social services, if you will. Um, we're going to go down that route and to see what it is that we can do uh, to generate some income in that community as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, will, will some of the programs be STEM related? Absolutely. We we um are we have an, another guy on board, and um, he is a STEM professional, and okay. so we talked about opening a STEM school. Um, here in Sanford, Florida, they have a uh, historical um, a, a historical house, if you will, and it's the oldest schoolhouse in uh, Seminole County, not so not just Sanford, Seminole County. And so we were thinking about um, really using that uh, history and turning it into something meaningful, right? Um, there's uh, down the street, there is a, a STEM magnet school for elementary. Our middle schools are uh, STEM related. And then we also have a high school here. Um, so it just it goes with the, the city, really. And so we're going to be advocates for our African-American babies and, and, and children to get involved and uh, get excited about STEM. All right, all right, and I really dig STEM because I'm actually, I'm professionally, I'm an engineer, electromechanical engineer, so 
I'm really, really big on us getting into these fields. Um, I don't see a lot of us at the professional level, at the level I'm at. I say I'm all the way up there because uh, I did start late, started like my mid thirties. Um, but being able to see us in here and knowing, you know, the type of income we can generate, which yeah. help us flood money back into to purchasing all these products from black owned companies. Yes. Um, I know that can really help, you know, our personal situations and help um, our community thrive. You know, we can start yes. seeing our money back in the communities. That's right. All right. So last question, and I believe you have some products to show us. So we're going to get to the last question. and We're going to get into some of your products. Um, where is Elo Puppet five years from now? Great question. Elo Puppet five years from now is on retail shelves um regional if you will so um definitely taking over the the east coast and the and the, and the south the southern states um we are um definitely in the community right we're 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 the face of florida you know hopefully in five years um we are uh gaining market share from uh from pampers right and hopefully crossing my fingers we could be in hospitals as well at least one hospital in the next five years okay that's what's up that's what's up so we're gonna do is we're gonna pan it up do you already have the products next to you yes all right awesome so i'm gonna put the spotlight directly on you okay and, uh, you can break down what you have with you um I, I got your website on the ticker below for people to go to check it out all right good people First off, we have the Elo Puppet Trial Pack. And these diapers are made with cotton. And we all know that we wear cotton, right? Cotton is super absorbent and it um, wicks away the moisture under the technology that we have. Um, they work better than the leading brand, right? They're hyperallergenic, which means they're great for babies with sensitive skin. They only come in size one, but that's okay. So this could be a great gift for those who are expecting or for those who just had a baby, probably no more than three months old, or I would say no more than um, about 15 pounds is um, this gift will be perfect for, right? And so on the back, we just have our representation. I love it. These are my friends. And uh, the top, if you want to know the website is definitely on here hellopuppet.com and then we also have our wipes and our wipes are also hyperallergenic there's 80 pieces in a pack made with cotton 99% water and I want I want to read this on the back of the packaging and I did this on purpose and it says Research shows that children who have positive and loving relationships with their father positively impacts their social development. Just like our wipes, being gentle and kind protects our babies. Our wipes are also um, alcohol free, by the way. So great for wiping off makeup, cleaning up messes, and of course, wiping those babies bottoms. So these awesome. next few products I want to introduce, these are um, other black owned baby care brands that um, I have partnered with. And the first up is Baba Lid. So the owner, the CEO and founder, her name is Sandy. Sandy, this, this invention was uh, about eight years in the making. She just launched a product this year. So if you head over to www.babalid.com, you'd be able to purchase these bottles. Um, they are great for babies at three months old, and I love them because they're multi-use, right? And they're eco-friendly um, with their packaging, and it is just a total great invention. When people thought that diapers were something, I mean, inventing a bottle was really something else. And um, this next brand is called Baby Bottle Brush Bib Company. And the founder and CEO is Bessie, and she's also a black woman. And she actually invented two products that you see here. 
So okay. she invented the the bottle baby bottle brush, which was the she invented the bib to reduce the backsplash when cleaning out the bottle. So you know your clothes are getting wet. Let's say if you were in a rush and you really need to clean the bottle, uh, a lot of times we get that splash back, but this bib protects us from that, right? And then she also invented the all-in-one pacifier teether. So we know that the teethers used to come with a cloth, um, but she replaced that with silicone. And then she also turned it into a teether. So this is easy to uh, sanitize, easy to clean, um, dishwash safe if need be. And of course you could take one of the Ello Puppet wipes, wipe it off, uh, wipe the mess off, and then continue to use it for your baby. And it comes with a matching clip. And what's the website? The website is babybottlebrushbib.com. She has a lot of great products on there. Um, when y'all get a chance, please check it out. So every product that I just showed you all, we made a, um, a um, what do we call it, baby shower bundle pack. And hopefully you all can see this, but it'll come in a LO Puppet diaper bag. This diaper bag is pretty big. It is pretty. It has like over 11 pockets from the front to the side, right into the back and then all the way on the inside. And so all of those products come in the diaper bag. So it's a, I'm telling you, it's a great um, baby shower gift a great sip and see gift right a diaper shower gift um it comes with diapers in it so um whenever you get a chance please check out these amazing products on the three websites below um i'm super excited to work with these companies and i wish them much success as well All right and i'm also sharing your social media she has a facebook page she also has a twitter yes and I saw this when I was uh, Googling you. You can also order the trial pack at walmart.com. Yes, you can. Family, and there's no excuse to support your sister. Um, my kids are my kids are older. But uh, <laughs> uh, I do got friends and family that have children, so I most definitely will think of your company first. Thank uh, you. And um, uh, show some love and also help keep money in our communities. That's right. So, Miss Kiara Mishner, is there anything else you want to let the people know before we close out? Um, I would say um, keep dreaming big. Keep going. Um, don't give up. Um, and, you know, try to remain, remain positive. Because what God has for you, it truly is for you. And no one could take that away from you. That's what's up. That's what's up. Respect to the most high. All right, family, you know what to do. Go to all the social medias, flood them, follow her, like everything. Head to Walmart, either Walmart.com or to LLPuppet.com. Make a purchase because it's peace and black empowerment. All right. Hey, go on my world. Don't be exit out of it, and so I'm working on stacking it back up. So audio, is my audio good? Your audio is perfect. God, dog. Awesome. All right, don't hurt yourself now. All right, that's it. Yep. Little, little sis is on it. She on it. <laughs> that looks good. Yep. What's going on, sis? Hi. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think you're sorry about knocking your sister down. I think you're fine. I'm going to play robots. All in the air. You know, you can share it. I'm just saying, some of us, we just can't. <laughs> don't have no more. I mean, I got plenty to go around. I'll tell you that much. Let me a little toupee or something. <laughs> right, let me know when you're ready. Night brighter, brighter. Well, yeah, that's so that's the bright light. No, the yellow light looks better. Yellow light look, gives me my color. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's a long t shirt. Can't wait for that movie to drop. You know what I'm saying? Set to my dude, Creeper Sword. 
I read it, read it for you. Oh, I've been recording. I got a whole bunch of back footage. Ooh, I got bloopers. <laughs> I got bloopers. No. <laughs> man, oh man. It's going down. All right, let me get serious. Let me get serious. <laughs> 